This video will show you how to use the cardiac monitor simulator that we'll use for your skills testing. And being familiar with it before you come to class will definitely save us some time. So to start, you'll notice that you can see lead 2 at the top there. Just below that, there's an SpO2 waveform. And below that, there is an ETCO2 waveform. And you'll notice also that there is an ETCO2 readout to the right. And all the way on the left in the green, there's a respiratory rate. Also, the temperature can be relevant, especially in some of our PALS cases, so you'll note there's a temperature over to the right. Now, for things that you can actually interact with on this monitor, blood pressure is definitely one of the most important. You'll want to take a blood pressure on all your patients, so you can go ahead and hit that button just to the right of the SpO2 readout, and you'll hear the cuff inflate, and after it has inflated, it'll give you a readout. Just keep in mind, this readout will be the same until you hit the button again. So it'll show you the last blood pressure until you repeat the NIBP. Some other things that you can interact with on the monitor. We have the defibrillator in the bottom right hand corner. And of course you can select the energy on it. And you'll just hit charge when you're ready to charge. I always recommend charging before you pause to do a rhythm check. And you can either disarm or you can go ahead and shock at this point. If you need to cardioavert instead of defibrillate, you can hit the sync button, and of course it'll sync to the R wave so you can avoid R and T phenomenon. And you can adjust your energy in the bottom right, and then you can go ahead and charge and shock. Now if you have a slow rhythm that you need to actually do transcutaneous pacing for, you can do that also. You'll notice that there is a pacemaker area in the center bottom area of the screen. You can go ahead and select your energy there and also your starting rate and then you can turn on the pacer. Now one thing you should be aware of, if you pace with too little energy you may not get capture after each pacer spike. So here we have the energy at 30 milliamps and there are pacer spikes but there's no ventricular response. So you need to turn it up so that you can get capture after every pacer spike. If you ever need to, you can always pause to see the underlying rhythm. And then you can hit pause again to resume the pacer. Now there are a couple other things that you can interact with on the monitor. For some of our scenarios, it's very important that you do a 12 lead. If you see where the ETCO2 level is and look just below that, there's a 12 lead button. You can go ahead and hit that and it'll bring up your 12 lead. And you can even zoom in on particular leads. For other scenarios, especially in the PALS testing, you may need to hit the X-ray button to view the X-ray of the patient. Now lastly, you should be aware of what the CPR rhythm looks like. So your chest compressions will look like this on the cardiac monitor. So when you come off chest compressions, you'll see the underlying rhythm, which in this case is ventricular tachycardia, and some students mistake the CPR rhythm for ventricular tachycardia, but it's not. It is your chest compressions, and you'll also note a metronome when it's going, and as soon as you come off, you'll see the underlying rhythm.